All right. Hey, guys, we are back again for another story. Um, we are going to continue on with our historical fiction text set. Um, and our next story, this book right here, um, is by Jacqueline Woodson. Um, it's titled Coming on Home Soon. Um, it, like I said, it's a historical fiction. Um, this book is set in the United States during World War, World War II. Um, the main character, her name is Ada Ruth. And I want you to look at her face um, and her posture in this cover illustration. How would you describe her, um, how would you describe her expression? And what emotions is the illustrator trying to show us before we begin reading the story? Okay. What do you think? How is she feeling here? What do her expressions show um, us, the reader? All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Coming on Home Soon by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Coming on Home Soon. Mama's hands are warm and soft. When she puts her Sunday dress into the satchel, I held my breath. Tried hard not to cry. Ada Ruth, she said. They're hiring colored women in Chicago since all the men are off fighting in the war. Mama folds another dress and puts it into the bag. I'm going to head on up there. Then she pulled me close up to her, pressed her face against mine. Make some money I can, uh, make some money I can send on home to you. Outside a pretty rain fell, making the brown fields shine. Ada Ruth, Mama said, do you know I love you more than anything in the world? Yes, ma'am, I whispered. More than rain, more than snow, Mama whispered back. The way we'd done a hundred times before, or maybe a hundred thousand. Why is Mama leaving? Do you think it's hard for her to leave? Is it hard for Ada Ruth? How can you tell? Grandma holds me when I cry. Hush now, she says. It's going to be all right. Hush now, she says. Your mama's going to be coming on home soon. But mama's been gone a long time, with no letter or money from her coming. Keep writing her, Grandma says. So I do. Wow, that must be really hard. There is snow this morning and a small black kitten scratching against our door. There is milk this morning, warm from the cow, Grandma says. You know, we can't keep it, then pours milk into a saucer and sets it down on the floor. There is a war going on. Some days, not even food, not much food to speak of. Cornbread and clabber milk um, for morning meal and supper. You know, we can't keep it, Grandma says again. The kitten drinks the milk up, rubs against my leg like it was, like it wants some more. And Grandma says, don't go getting attached now, Ada Ruth. So I want you to think about your impressions of Grandma so far. What is your impression of her? 
And what kind of person is she based on what we've seen so far? Okay, be ready to share that with me on your document, okay? Um, what is your first impression of grandma? And what kind of person is she? <clears throat> it's a slip of a thing, but its softness is big and warm as tin quilts on my lap. I don't think I turned up the picture. There you go. Warm as mama's hands, I rub the kitten's back. More than snow, mama said. I love you more than snow. I watched the snow come down fast, trying hard to remember the way my mama smelled. Like sugar some days, and some days like sun. Some days like the lye soap that turned her hands yellow, but got the wash real clean. I blinked hard, but the tears still try to come. Why is Ada Ruth trying not to cry? Are her memories comforting? Or do they make her sadder? Hmm. That's a good question. Okay. Here we go. Good thing it's too cold for fleas. Grandma says coming in with more wood uh, for the stove, or else that thing would be full of them. She holds her head sideways, takes the kitten in. Uh, can't get much uglier now, can it? Me and the kitten give Grandma a mean look. Time passes. Looks like she's kind of bored, just kind of hanging out, spending time with her little cat. There's her and her grandma in the window. <clears throat> when the postman goes on by without stopping, grandma says, hush now, don't start crying. But her eyes are sad. Like she's wanting to cry too. In Chicago, Mama said, "I can wash the I can wash the rail <laughs> I can wash the railroad cars." Um, just imagine Ada Ruth, a colored woman working on the railroad. So she's imagining her mama working on the railroad. At night, me and Grandma listen to the radio, hear about the battles being fought and all the men who've died. I listen with my eyes closed, pray for all those men who won't be coming home, who won't be coming on home soon. Outside, the snow keeps falling, the war goes on and on. When Grandma turns, turns the radio off, I rub my hand along the kitten's back and think about the women working on the trains. Just think. My mama right there beside them. So Ada Ruth says, the war goes on and on. Is she talking just about the news on the radio? Or is there another meaning to that? The war goes on and on. So I want you to think about how the war is affecting Ada Ruth. Okay, because, you know, she's a kid. But, you know, even though she's not on the front line fighting in the war or she's not having to go out to work um, to provide for her family, you know, how is this moment in her life truly affecting her? OK, think about that. Ice storm. Came last night, Grandma says, as she hunts possum and rabbit. If she catches one, there'll be some meat for a stew. A little bit of me hopes we find one. A little bit of me hopes we don't. <laughs> me and Grandma keep watching, or me and Grandma keep walking, and the kitten 
behind us, shivering until Grandma stoops and lifts it into her coat. Don't you know about cold snaps, she asks, how they come on fast and sometimes stay? The land goes on and on, flat sometimes and then climbing up into a hill. How do you think Grandma feels about the kitten? And how can you tell? What is your opinion about why she keeps the kitten, even though she said that they wouldn't? That's an interesting thing to think about, too. I think I have an idea of why she kept it, even though she said that they wouldn't. But I want to hear what you have to say. All right. What's the next one? Grandma says it's all uh, leads out. It all leads out into the big wide world. One day I'm gonna set off to see it all. Maybe I'll go by railroad. When we get home, Grandma starts the wood stove again. Uh, Mama, Grandma starts the wood stove going. Um, our wet clothes steaming on top of it. Hot cocoa, too, and two biscuits from last night's supper, and the postman making his way up the road. So what can you, um, I want you to make a prediction. So think of a prediction right now. Um, what can you predict is about to happen? Okay, because that last line lets us know, it says, and the postman making his way up the road. What do you think is going to happen? Will the postman stop at their house and leave them something? Or will the postman keep on going by just like he's been doing every other day? Think of a predictor right now so that when you get to the document here in a little bit, you'll type the prediction that you have right now, okay? Even though I'm gonna read on and you're gonna find out what it is, I want you to be honest and type your prediction in the document, your first prediction of what you're thinking right now, okay? All right, here we go. Let's go find out what's gonna happen. If the postman's gonna come by or not. Oh my gosh, he's there. Thank you, Lord, Grandma whispers, when he puts the letter with Mama's beautiful cursive in her hand, money falling from it, when grandma steams it open and um, the first line, tell Ada Ruth, I'll be coming on home soon. Like a song you want to sing over and over. Wow. So special. The small black kitten beside us as we read the letter again and again. I think she's taken a mind to stay, I say. Well, she needs to take a mind to go, Grandma says, but she puts a blanket down by the fire and whispers, quiet and halfway pretty. When you look at her in just the right way, inside it's warm and quiet, stew cooking on the stove, outside snow falls and falls, and somewhere there's my mama, Loving me more than rain, loving me more than snow, cleaning trains, and coming on home soon. That's the end of it. Aww. That one almost made me want to cry. That's super sweet. And it, you know, it means a lot when a parent is willing to go away to do work. Um, for their kids. It's hard for a parent to go away um, to work in another town or another city, um, but just know that if your parent ever has to do that, that they love you dearly. And if you stay with your grandparents or someone else, um, just know that your grandma or your grandpa or whoever's taking care of you loves you very, very much um, because they're willing to, to keep you and take good care of you while your parents are away. That was a sweet story. All right, you guys. So go ahead and open that document now after you exit out of this. Um, fill out that document and 
you have a writing assignment that I'll um, have typed in there for you to complete. There will be three or four questions to type your answers to, and then an actual written response prompt at the bottom. Okay, finish your work for me today and get it turned in. Don't forget to hit the submit button. All right, guys, thank you. Love you all, and I will see you soon. Bye.